Hey everyone, this is Laura Lyman Joy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to reverse grocery shop, plus I have a few extra tips I wanna share with you. Hey everyone, this is Laura at Lyman Joy, and I'm really excited to get in today's video where I teach you about reverse grocery shopping, and I'm gonna share some other tips and tricks that I use every month to save a lot of money on my groceries. So I know that groceries is always a pain point where it's just increasing in its prices every single month. So having a strategy and implementing it every month and getting better and better at it is going to be something that is extremely important and crucial for you to have a successful budget. For those of you that don't know me, I am Laura at Lyman Joy. I'm a wife, a medical coder, and a mom of six, and I'm on a journey to become debt-free and break generational cycles of debt so the next generation can live and give like they were meant to. Here on this channel, we do cash budgeting, debt payoffs, no spend challenges, and things like this to give you nice tips and tricks to save as much money as possible in your budget and be as successful as possible. So I'm excited to share that with you today. All right, so we're going to first start out with how much money did I have in my grocery budget this month. And I think that's really where you need to start. I think if you are that kind of person where you just go to the store and you buy whatever you see and you come home and you don't know how you're spending thousands of dollars a month, then that's probably where you need to start with is you need a budget to make sure that you're staying within your allotted amount that you have every single month. I'll put how to do a monthly budget and figure that out right here to help you along with that. But if you know your monthly budget, like I do every single month, as you you can see right here. Let me go ahead and take a, a drink off of this. Then you will already know exactly how much money you have to work with. So for me, I already know because I've done my monthly budget, as I'm going to show you here, that my groceries amount is $700. That's what I've chose to use uh, to allot to groceries this month. That's how much money I have to stay within limits. But because I'm doing a no spend and I'm sick and tired of my debt and I wanna get it paid off, or maybe you're sick and tired of not going on that vacation because all your money goes towards groceries, then making sure that you spend as least amount as possible, wasting your money in all these expensive groceries is going to be a really important thing. So I know it is to me. One way that I make sure to track that is I go ahead and I do a check-in, a weekly check-in. So the very first few days a uh, week for this month, I went ahead and spent $53 in groceries and $104 in gasoline, and then it's my extra. These are my pain points where I have issues with, so this is what I focus on. You see, my second week I've spent $195. So if I go ahead and add that up, I told you that I had $700 allotted and I have 195 and I have 53, so I have $452 left for my groceries. That kind of gives me a good idea of how much money I can spend on it, but also kind of encourages me like how little can I spend because that's not a lot of money left and I don't want to use it all in case there's an emergency and I also would like to use that money towards something else and not waste it on groceries unless I have to. Um, even though I love to eat good and make sure that my family is all fed, if I can save money in this area, this is where I've really been able to pay extra money in debt and kind of rocket launch, you know, my goals in a more, uh, a more quick way. So, all right. So what I do to start off is this is my grocery list for this week. But before I fill up my grocery list, I had to do an inventory of my refrigerator. I opened up that refrigerator and I went through it and I saw everything that could make a meal. And I wrote that down. Of course, I'm assuming that you already have the staples like milk and butter and things like that. This is going to be more like, you know, artichokes, asparagus, pepperoni, celery, carrots, and eggs. And of course, I'm blessed to always have eggs because uh, a couple years ago, we decided to get chickens, which I adore. I love having chickens. Um, I set them up so that I only have to care for them really once a month. Everything's on an auto feed and an auto um, waterer. And so the kids love getting the eggs and having that supply all the time has been really nice. So that was one way that I kind of cut down um, some 
you know, Bill's always having eggs on hand is important. And as weird as it has been in America, you know, the eggs have gotten really expensive here and there. So having that has been helpful. Next up, I went to that freezer and I went through every single thing in the freezer that I could make a real good meal out of it. Of course, there's other little things that I left, but it wouldn't make a complete meal and didn't interest me for this grocery shopping uh, week. So, but I bought a chicken breast and shrimp from breakfast sausage, corned beef, chorizo, bacon, and even the rice cauliflower packages that I had. So then I went ahead and went to my pantry and I looked through my whole pantry. Now I have a pantry in my house and also one in my garage, some little extra things that I've gotten, you know, saved up here and there when there was a good deal. And I went ahead and put everything that I thought would be helpful in making a dinner and a meal right here. Then there's some other stuff like a yellow onion, garlic, apples, you know, cuties, little oranges, and some bananas for the kids. Now that I know what I have, this is what, basically, this is the store at my house that I have all filled up. This is what I have to work with. Then I can do one of two things. If you're really savvy and you know how to like look at that and make a meal, then good for you. I am not a very good uh, cook. My husband was a chef for many years. He can look at five ingredients and make 10 different things. I am not that savvy. So I'm going to tell you a few different things that I do. For instance, I usually have ground beef on hand. I don't this time, but I'm going to include it for the sake of the conversation. If you had ground beef and you had crushed tomatoes, let's say in green beans, which I do have, and you Google that into, put that into Google and search it, it's going to give you all kinds of meals that you can make with ground beef, crushed tomatoes, and green beans. And I am definitely going to take it up. When I was thinking about this, I decided I was going to use that for one of my meals. Another one, for instance, could be if you Google chicken breast and cheddar cheese slices, you're probably going to come up with even a different meals. So uh, not knowing what to make with what you have isn't really something that we have to deal with in the 21st century. It's really nice that you could take two or three ingredients, Google it, and then pick a recipe that you feel like is the best. I always make sure I pick one that has the least ingredients so I'm not, you know, buying a bunch of ingredients to complete the meal. So I'm excited about that. Now, there's always, though, a couple staples in my house that I just know my kids like to eat. I know how to make it. I make it all the time. And so I'm going to use some of those ideas here, as you're going to be able to see in a minute as well. So after I have this grocery shopping list all planned out, then I go ahead and I kind of just think, okay, what can I make from this grocery list? And so the first thing that I think about is I like to start with my dinners. I don't know why, but I just like to start with my dinners. I think I feel like that's the most stress and pain point in my life. So that's where I'm going to start. All right. Well, first off, I see that chicken breast. I'm going to make and some mushroom chicken. Um, this is mushroom canned chicken soup. I'm going to make that because I know my kids absolutely adore that. So let's we'll see here. We're going to do mushroom chicken. And this is super easy to cook. You just fry the chicken, throw in the mushroom soup into the pan, get the scrapings off it, pour into a big pan and bake it for about, you know, half an hour, give or take the temperature you put it at and you're done. So that one's super easy. I'm going to put in, see, I have um, white rice. We're going to add some white rice to that because my kids love that with the mushroom chicken sauce. And then I had asparagus on hand, actually four bunches, way more than I should have, but I think I bought at extra on accident. So let's put asparagus here. Definitely want to use up that quickly. Now, another reason why I do this is I want to make sure that I don't have anything expiring ever. In the past, when I would just go to the grocery store and buy all the sales, I even was still frugal and buy all the sales. What would happen is I would be throwing away a bunch of food because it would expire. I would forget it's in the bottom, you know, bottom drawer. It's in the back. I missed it. This way, I ensure to use all my food and that nothing spoils. I even wrote down here, I'll explain later, 410. It means I have 14 apples, but four of them are close to being a little softer than they should be and I need to do something with it. This is why I make sure that I never throwing away any food because that's a really big deal to me. Okay, other than mushroom uh, chicken, I think another one that I'm gonna make off of this is a shrimp cauliflower fried rice. So again, I'm just comparing this shrimp. 
uh, the rice cauliflower, and I'm gonna use regular rice for the kids. So I'm gonna do like a shrimp cauliflower fried rice. They'll just do a regular shrimp and, and fried rice. And I already have the eggs and the carrots. I do, it looks like I need some like, maybe some little like uh, frozen carrots and peas. Um, and then, you know, some seasoning in it. So shrimp and cauliflower fried rice. All right. So that one's exciting. Uh, my kids love that one. A next one is I knew I wanted to make was corned beef and cabbage because it's coming up. It's actually, I think, going to be what on Sunday. So I'll put it right here because that's when St. Patty's Day is. And we kind of just always eat that for St. Patty's corn, beef, and cabbage. Now I could stop right now as I go. A lot of times I do. I can already tell you that. I am going to need the cabbage. I don't have that. So let's go ahead and add that to my grocery list, which will go right here. All right. And we talked about those peas and carrots for the fried rice. So let's put some frozen peas and carrots. They're just easier to use in the fried rice and they're pretty inexpensive. Okay, next up while looking at this, so, you know, I've used the corned beef, I've used up the mushroom chicken and the shrimp. I think the next thing I'm going to do is this chorizo. I'm not a huge chorizo fan, so it's been in my refrigerator forever and I've decided I need to suck it up and we're going to just use it and make something. So I'm going to do chorizo and eggs one night, like a breakfast for dinner. Um, and I know the kids will love that and we'll make that with some, we have some tortillas and we have cheese. And so we'll make all that, put that all together and that'll be fantastic. And then I think I'm also going to do that ground beef and green bean Amish dish that I was Googling. And so I am going to add what I need for that, which is ground beef. I do not have any. So let's go over here and add ground beef to it. All right. Now let's see here. Last thing is on Friday night, we always do pizza night. So as you can see, I have pepperoni and tortillas. We make our pizzas from tortillas. We don't like like the thick bread. So we're gonna do pizza night right here. I already have the pepperoni and I think the only thing I'm missing is mozzarella cheese. So let's go ahead and add the mozzarella cheese to my here, mozzarella. And I think that's good for that. And then this will probably be a leftover fend for yourself night. So, cause I, uh, there's always leftovers and I don't want them to ever expire. So another note on that is kind of what I do here going forward. Okay, I will plan out a few lunches and I'll plan out a few breakfasts, but I, they're not really days assigned. Just like these will probably not be assigned to days either. To be honest with you, some people like this and I made this in case people like to be very organized and eat things on certain days to defrost certain stuff. I don't really you know, work like that. I usually take out about two at a time, defrost them in the refrigerator, make one one night and one the next night. I'm pretty, a little more loose than what I choose because throughout the day it changes what I want. So I'm not really sure which one I'm even going to choose until probably three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So for instance, probably tomorrow I'll take out mushroom, you know, I'll put, take out chicken and shrimp. I'll put it in the refrigerator and it's fine defrosting there for two days. And at the, you know, later on the day, I'll figure out which what I want and finish defrosting it so I can go ahead and cook it. Um, same with the lunches. I just usually pick out a few different ones and I make them and that's what the kids are going to eat. It's pretty mellow when it comes to lunches because we eat leftovers. So I can already tell you the first day I told the kids I was going to make up some bacon and they can make themselves a cob salad. Now my other kiddos are in school. This is for my older children that like this. And of course me and my husband love Cobb salad as well. So we have that bacon, we have that iceberg tomatoes, celery, all those make up a really good salad with that. Then I had salami and I had cheese 
and I'm just gonna do sandwiches, okay, for that. Now, I already know doing that that I don't have bread, so let's go ahead and add bread to the list. Okay, and, but so far I have everything else that I've been saying on my list. I have, I'm gonna do PB and J, which now I have bread, so that's good, and, and then pretzels, and that's kind of just a fill-in for the kiddos, you know, um, when they need it. And then when I was, and then the rest really is going to be leftover. So most of the time, my husband and I, I should say almost every day, we just eat the leftovers. So I'll make a meal or two, maybe we'll eat, you know, Cobb salad, and then the next day we'll eat mushroom chicken and then shrimp. And so it kind of just goes on. I always have lunch available because I usually just make a little bit of extra and I use that for the next day's meal. So make sure you utilize that. Eat those leftovers. It really makes that money stretch, okay? Then breakfast is the same thing. I just have a few different staples in my house that kids eat. Um, I don't really eat breakfast, but so granola cereal is one of them. And then eggs and fruit. That's a real big staple in our house. Yogurt, which I'm out of, so I need to get more of that. And then... I had a bunch of steel oats um, and those apples that I was talking about beforehand that are going to go bad. So I'm going to make some um, apple cinnamon oatmeal probably tonight. My husband will probably actually end up making it, to be honest with you. And then the kids will have that for a few days too. So let's do um, apple cinnamon oatmeal. All right. And then... This is more like pick what you want, right? They can have one of these. They can decide to make their own creation or have a piece of toast and peanut butter or something like that, right? So this is enough for the whole entire week. We'll have plenty. And like I said, there's little staples that I have in between that I could always throw in here um, if I really needed to. But that is it. Let me add that yogurt to my list. That was the only one that was really not on there. Let me add that. And now I'm going to show you actually how I how much this is. I'm going to go into Walmart uh, pickup app, and in there I enter in all these, and it's going to be close to just about I don't know thirty to thirty three dollars. I'll show you right here. So I've added all of the items that I had on my grocery list to my Walmart pickup uh, cart. So we have sourdough bread there, mozzarella cheese yogurt for the kiddos, cabbage for that corned beef and cabbage, peas and carrots for that shrimp and fried rice. And then I also have this ground beef here, which is exciting because this is three pounds. And so I'll have some extra left over. Then it goes ahead and I have my total of $36 and 18 cents, which is pretty good. I think for uh, all of these different things put together. All right, so that whole meal plan is done. I've done my reverse grocery shopping. I know what I have. As I use it, I'll kind of check it off and see what's left at the end of the month. I know my grocery list is good. This I'll post it on my refrigerator, and if anything pops up, I'll add to it before I finish my grocery order, which will probably be at Walmart Pickup. Now, that's my second real strategy is I do not like going into grocery stores unless I have that, you know, mental preparedness of what I am doing. If you struggle with you going into grocery stores and spending too much money, this is a great tip for you. First of all, using something like Fetch, which is an app that go ahead and gives you points for things like uh, that are connected to Walmart Pickup or Amazon or things like that will give you points for groceries. Um, it's amazing. I If you haven't been signed up for it yet, please do it because I make money back on my groceries all year long and then I use that to pay for you know, birthday presents or Christmas, it's really been powerful. And even just a little bit adds up. And when you, you get the bigger, they have like little deals like, oh, if you buy Fritos, then you get an extra 2,500 points. Those help. I don't try to go for them. It just naturally happens throughout the year as I'm buying stuff that every once in a while I get a bigger amount because I hit one of their promotional things. So Utilize the Fetch app reward if you haven't yet. Download it today and all you do is take a picture of that receipt. Or if you're doing Walmart pickup order like I do, it's already attached by my email so I don't have to. It instantly uploads that. It gives me the points for it. So I love this. It's really great. Everything I buy off Amazon, same thing. It gives me the points for it. It's been fabulous. Um, so that's definitely right. You got to do this reverse grocery shopping. 
You know, if you ha struggle, make a Walmart pickup order and just go pick it up. Don't go into that. And then what do I do with the leftover? Okay, so I have that extra money left over, right? I've done grocery shopping. How is it that I even had all those groceries in my refrigerator to begin with? I do not just go to the grocery store and buy stuff. This is probably one of my biggest tips. I use my leftover money to shop all the deals. Now, when I'm shopping deals, I'm also not just going from store to store to store, wasting all my time and getting all these uh, good, you know, doing all these coupon stuff I used to way back in the day, and I just do not have time for that. So instead, I pull up on my phone the few different stores near me. We have like Save Mart, Smart and Final, um, sometimes even Costco, and I only pick out, okay, I'm going to get you know, ground beef and this or that or the other from this store. I'm going to get this and this from that store and this and this from the other store. And just, I'll go there probably once a month with a little bit of extra over that I have. And I will only buy things that are significantly on sale. So this is a really big deal for me because you have to realize not only you grocery shopping out of my pantry, but the stuff that's in my pantry, in my refrigerator, in my freezer right now, I got on sale. I didn't just go and buy whatever. So that next time I go grocery shopping reverse at home, that those things were purchased at a great, great discount. And then I create the, the meal. I don't do, I used to way back in the day, figure out what I wanted to make, make a grocery list, went to the store, and I ended up spending so much money because those things that I chose weren't always on sale. Doing it the other way is going to make sure that you are always purchasing things that are on sale and then utilizing everything and not allowing anything to spoil. So I'm going to use my left and right to shop all the deals. I probably won't go uh, this week. I'll probably go next week because there was even a few other things in there in my refrigerator and stuff that I could use. But so somewhere between 100 and $200 I'm going to use to shop deals. So this is a really big important one to do for sure. So we have that reverse grocery shopping, we have shop the deals, make sure you're using fetch and really um, honing in. And then lastly, just remember, if it's about to, ex to expire and you have it, use it first so you're never throwing away waste. Those four big things I think has made it so that I make sure never to waste food, and always make my money stretch as far as possible. I hope you found value in this. I hope that it helped you figure out how to utilize your money and your grocery shopping a little more efficiently. If you have any questions, please put them below. If you are looking for um, maybe a grocery list like this to kind of break it down and make your first rever reverse grocery shopping list, I will link these forms below at a really low, low cost on my website so that you can start making your profit from making sure you're grocery shopping right out of your home. All right. As always, please find joy in this journey and I will put some videos and tips and tricks to save more money right here.